All right, so the taxes that we were just talking about, there are actually two types of real estate tax. They are a statutory, involuntary, specific lien. The taxes on my house have nothing to do with the taxes on your house, specific. Involuntary because we did not choose to have it done, and it's uh, statutory because there's a rule. The biggest and most common type of lien is what they call an ad volarum lien. Ad volarum. I can never spell this. Been in this business 20 years, I can still never remember. V A L O R E M. Ad volarum is Latin, which means at value. So your real estate taxes are somehow based on the value of your property. Okay? That's why it's an ad valerum. Now, the easy way to calculate this, it is a very simple math calculation. So when you calculate someone's annual taxes, annual ad valerum, It is this simple thing called the assessed value all right now let's stop there for a minute the assessed value in the real estate world one property may have six different values it's got the assessed value it's got the sales value it's got the loan value, it's got the appraised value. Every one of these calculations uses a very specific value type. If you use the wrong value in the calculation, you will get a wrong answer. For instance, you do not use the uh, appraised value to calculate taxes. You use the assessed value. The state has an assessed value for everybody's house. If you pull your taxes, it will say your property is assessed at some number. What you hope is that your house is assessed at lower than you paid for it. What you don't want is your property assessed at something higher than you paid. That means you're paying higher taxes. Now, that's just a little tongue in cheek. What you really want is your assessed value to be close to what you paid for the house. And there's some other reasons why that will happen. Because if you sell your property and your property is assessed really low and the new person coming in is buying it, they're going to realize their taxes are going to jump. So that may be a detriment to them buying your property. So you want the assessed value to be close. The good thing about the test and in real life, you guys cannot assess property. I actually am a level one assessor for the state. I can do it. You cannot. So in the exam, it will be given to you. All right? But make sure you use the right one. This test will give you what's called the confusion factor, where they're going to say something like, you purchased a property for 100 grand and borrowed 80,000, but it was appraised at 117 and assessed at 98. Figure the taxes. The only value in there that you need is the assessed value because that's what taxes are based on. Not the appraised amount, not the loan amount, not what you paid for it, not what you want it to be worth, not what Santa Claus said it was worth. It's what the state says your property is assessed at. So the assessed value will be given to you. All right? The second factor, if you take the assessed value times some equalization factor, all right, the equalization factor in Indiana, we call it the Q factor. There are like 14 things that go into figuring it. It will be given to you on the exam. You cannot figure this one either, all right? 
What the equalization factor does is it raises or lowers the value of a specific property because it is unique or different than the neighborhood that it's in. All right, so if we came in and said all y'all, or let's see, wait, that's singular in Texas, isn't it? It's Ewans. Ewans is plural. If Ewans all had the same house, I could assess everybody's house in here exactly the same. Three bedroom, two bath, 1,500 square foot. Right? Oh, but wait a minute. One of you got a four bedroom house. I have to lower the value of your house to match the ones around it. So I would give it an equalization factor of like less than one. All right, everybody understand this factor's a modifier. So 0.8 would lower your value. Somebody's got a two bedroom, we may have to give you a 1.2 to bring the value up. The reality is in the exam it will say using an equalization factor of something, you don't have to calculate it, you can't do that, you don't have the ability. So just worry about it. If it doesn't mention the equalization factor, Guess what number it is? One means it's equal to everybody else. So if it does, if it just gives you the assessed value and the tax rate doesn't mention the equalization, just assume it to be one that it's just like every other property. So what you have is the assessed value, which will be given to you. You have the equalization factor, which will be given to you. The third component is this thing called a tax rate. The tax rate is actually something we can calculate. All right? Anybody know what the state tax rate is right now? The state tax rate. What? Not sales tax, that's 7% sales tax. Holy Christ, if it was 7%, we'd be in trouble. <clears throat> what? 0. 0.8, that's the drinking alcohol level. <laughs> so I hear, not that I know. I, it's 1% for residential. Remember several years ago when we went to that 1, 2, 3? 1% for residential, 2% for commercial, 3% for industrial. I mean 3% for investment. 1%. But... Everybody in the area and the world can add on to that tax rate. Anybody live in Perry Township? Yeah. Did your taxes just go up? Yes. We voted, yes they did. We voted a referendum to add money to the school board because of the large contingency of the Burmese that are coming in. We have a translation issue where we hire more students or more teachers and translators. So the school board in Perry Township needed more money. We voted as a Perry Township to add more to our taxes to support that. All right? That was a Perry Township thing. Libraries, water districts, parks, any of these can add on to your 1%. Okay? Now, tax rates are expressed in what we call a mill. A mill is one one thousandth of a dollar. Right? 0 0.001. For you math people, remember, tens, hundreds, thousandth. So a mill is one thousandth of a dollar. So our tax rate is 0 0.010, which is called what? Ten mills. But it's also equal to, if you'll notice, in the math, 1%, right? 0 0.01, isn't that 1%? 10 mils, 0 0.010, 
is 10 mils or 1%. That is our current state tax rate. Hmm? I know, you guys are asking to do an example. Good, let's do an example. So here's the question. Your client comes to you and says, I want to buy this house, but I want to figure out how much my monthly payment is so I can see if I can afford it. So I want to ask you my monthly tax bill on a house that's assessed at $125,000. All right, it has an equalization factor of 0.8, so that's 0 0.08, 0 0.80, 8, and has 125 mils tax rate, 125 mils tax rate. Client says, I need to know how much my monthly taxes, please help me out. And you say, okay, no problem, it's an easy math, so go. <coughs> Hundred and twenty five mils. <coughs> what we have an answer of what? Tell me exactly what you mean. Twelve hundred and fifty dollars. That's one answer. What's another answer? Twelve thousand five hundred. So somebody's off by a factor of ten there. Saying what'd you get? He's still working on it. Anybody else get a different answer? What? Say it out loud. 10,000 10, even? Yeah. We'll put that number down. Don't be afraid to be wrong. <laughs> Stay aggressive. Okay, I'll help you out and tell you none of those answers are correct. Sort of. So let's go through the math. How much is the ha house assessed at? 125. I can't work my own calculator here. The equalization factor is 0.8. What's 125 mils in decimals? 0.125, right? 0 0.125, that's 125 mils. That's 12.5%, by the way. That's a big number. If you do that simple math of 125,000 times 0.8 times the tax rate of 0.125, you might want to do that math again. You get what? 12,500. No. I said sort of, because I got you on the oldest trick in the book, and I've pounded this into your guys' head many, many times, and I did to you what the test is going to do to you. Because what did I ask you? I actually ask you for the monthly tax rate, not the annual, because your, stu your client said, I want to add it to my monthly bill. What's my monthly tax rate? 1,041 becomes the answer. What the test would have done to you is put 12,500 as like letter A, yeah. and you'd have marked it and moved on. And I've told you this before. Answer the question they ask. What was the other thing I told you? Read every answer before you mark it. You have plenty of time to do that. 
do not get caught in this example of that I just showed you. Because this math is so simple, they're going to throw you a loop just to make sure that you know what you're listening. The other thing they could have asked, which is a more common question, what's the semi-annual tax? Because that's what our taxes report, semi-annual tax, which in this case would have been $6,250 because we pay it twice a year. So please, please, let me say it one more time, please, answer the question that's asked of you, and they are going to try and get tricky. Okay? They are going to try and get tricky. Can you, can you work through number nine and two? Because it asks for over, so it's supposed to subtract the percentage. Well, it would be the same thing. What's 125%? 1.25? Yeah. What is it? Number nine? Oh, let's leave that. Okay, we're going off the grid real quick. Read me the question. What's the assessed value? So we're going to number nine in the back of the book. Okay, so see, you just screwed me up by reading that. You didn't read? I need the assessed value. Don't get caught up in that. See, they just threw the confusion factor in. I don't care what you paid for it. 47250 That is the assessed value. That's a heck of a deal if you bought it for 135 and your property is assessed at 47 All right. It has an equalization factor of... So that would be 1.25, right? 125% is 1.25. So this is a small house. They're raising the value. And this, the uh, tax rate is 25 mils. 25 mils is the tax rate, which is what in decimal? No. It's point. 0 0.025 is 25 mils. Take the mils divided by 1,000. 25 divided by 1,000 becomes 0 0.025. And it's asking for the annual? Are you sure? So you don't get me screwed up. <laughs> so take 47,250 times 1.25 times 0 0.025, what do you get? Say it louder, please. So $1,476? I didn't do the math, so I'm trusting you guys. So the answer is rounded to 1477. <laughs> Don't give me the monthly taxes on that because that's not what it asked for. I tricked you. They actually were straightforward in this. It asked for the annual taxes. If you took that 1477 divided by 12, you get 100 and what did you say, 23? That roughly would be their monthly taxes they would add on to their escrow portion for their loan if you wanted to do that. And they will give you that. And there's one question on the exam that says something like that. It's assessed at this, appraised at this, you borrowed at this, you paid this, and which and figure the taxes. Because when you look at that and you're like, how can this property be valued at 135 and the taxes are this? The assessed value is not the market value. Do not confuse that and don't let that fool you. If it says 47,250 and you paid a million for it, just drive on, do the math. Just make sure you use the right value of assessed value. 
Don't question it. Don't throw it into Indiana's laws and go, well, that's too low. You know, somebody did the, the last example I gave you at 12.5%. They're like, well, that's Indiana's 1%. Don't use the Indiana. Use the numbers. Even though they're outlandish or ridiculous, don't get tripped up on the confusion factor. I hope that was an answer on number nine's quiz. All right.